Hello everyone, welcome to another Black Mermaid reading vlog. So I'm excited to be doing this. If you didn't know, back in 2020, I believe, I did a mermaid reading vlog, specifically a Black Mermaid reading vlog, because I was interested in exploring more literature that featured Black Mermaids, and I read a whole host of titles that were out at the time. Since then, we have gotten a lot more books, especially because when this is going up, The Little Mermaid will be it coming out, and I'm ecstatic about it. I'm excited to see it. I am going to, my mom and I literally were just talking about this, and I am going to go see it, I think, by myself, because I think in terms of like how loud the movie theater is and the length of the movie I'm not sure that my daughter's gonna be able to handle that yet she's still only three so I probably will wait until it comes out on Disney Plus for her to see it but for me I need to go see it because I'm excited to go see it so I am actually starting this vlog a little bit later than I anticipated this is the week of the movie release and now I'm trying to read all the things because it is definitely like me to wait until the last minute to do everything. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what I have planned for the vlog and what I anticipate or I'm hoping to get to and what I've already started. So this go around I'm including a little bit more picture books. I have three picture books that I want to read. One of the picture books that I have is Mermaid and Pirate. This is by Tracy Baptiste. If you did not know I read her Jumbies series the first time that I did this reading vlog because it had Black Mermaids in it and this one specifically Mermaid and Pirate. It's going to be really really interesting. I received this a while ago and I've held off from reading it because I wanted to save it for this vlog because I knew that this is what I wanted to do and I also have because of course I just left it in my book bag because that's so like me to do these things. Why do I do these things? I also have The Little Mermaid, which was written by Jerry Pickney, who is a Caldecott winner. Unfortunately, he has passed. I believe it's been at least a year at this point since he's passed away. But I've never read his adaptation of The Little Mermaid, but his artwork is absolutely gorgeous. Let's see if I can find. So, you can see, his artwork is beautiful. So I'm excited to pick this one up and then I have another picture book that I believe should be waiting for me at the library. It's the Three Mermaid Princesses. That's a new release too that I'm anticipating to read. So those are three picture books that I anticipate picking up. I do have an early release copy of Sing Me to Sleep, which is a YA dark fantasy. This is a siren. So like in my last vlog, I specifically said that I was reading books that included Black Mermaids and Black Sirens, and this is one that I wanted to include. Now this one is pretty chunky. It is close to, if not over 400 pages, and I will be reading it physically, so it may take me a little bit of time to get to this one. I'm hoping to make it through this, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to. But I really, really do want to get to Sing Me to Sleep because I've been meaning to read this one for a while since I got it at Y'all Fest last year, and it doesn't release until June. Now, I did want to explore my options on KU because, as y'all know, I am currently in the midst of a book buying ban that I have imposed upon myself, and I was able to find some great titles on KU. I even created my own list that was Black Mermaid. Some of them I have read before, just reading my KU romance books and others I just discovered while perusing KU. And one of the ones that I am currently reading right now is actually an urban romance, but it's like an urban paranormal fantasy romance. So it is by you, King of the Seas, and this is book one and two by Anatia L. Jackson. And this is a quick read. It is about so many different <laughs> things, trying to figure out a good way to explain this. So essentially, it, it, it takes place in our world, but in our world, we have what are underworld creatures. So mermaids, sirens, um, sorceress. There's a sorceress who's the main character. 
there's fae, there's vampires. So it's a whole mashup of different things, which I'm really, really enjoying. But we're getting multiple perspectives, and it primarily is focusing on the king of this specific mermaid clan. And they are dying. There's something that is polluting the water. And what's interesting about the setup of this book is that they actually can walk on land amongst humans and they only have to i believe swim in a body of water like two to three times a week and they're fine but the water is contaminated there's something that's killing them and it's something that is also causing them to be unable to produce offspring and so bayou who's the king is really really stressed out about the fact that he can't figure out what exactly is going on so there's this romantic element because he used to or he was best friends with this woman who was a sorceress and she was supposed to be made it to him but his brother kind of stepped in and was like mm, no i think i want her so i'm gonna take her he kind of swooped in made it to her proposed they were engaged and then his brother goes missing and basically they've pretty much assumed that he's been dead so there's this tension between the two of them because she's pretty much like well you're responsible for your brother going missing and i feel some type of way about that and but they're forced to pretty much work together because of the fact that they're trying to figure out what's going on in this community. I am really enjoying this because it's like a mashup of black culture but in this like fantasy paranormal world and we get the perspectives of multiple people like there's perspectives of Bayou's sister and also kind of like his top security guard or his bodyguard his top bodyguard and so I'm seeing kind of like a almost like a second chance romance and then a bodyguard um, romance as well it seems like there's going to be one it's interesting and the bodyguard is a mix of being a uh, merfolk and a vampire listen it's it's interesting and actually our heroine she is part succubus part sorceress so there's so many different elements to this and i know that some people are probably like oh that's too many like a mixing of like underworld characteristics where we're having all of these magical people who are interacting with humans at the same time but i'm finding it really interesting there was a quote <laughs> so i'm i'm about 66 pages into this already it's a really really quick read and it's 354 pages but I literally have just been reading this off and on throughout the day and I'm already 66 pages in so I think that this is going to be extremely quick for me but this quote really just had <laughs> me dying where this is from the perspective of his sister and she said tonight so she's <laughs> this is the messy part about it so Coral who is his sister let me backtrack Coral who is his sister is really upset because in the beginning of the book this is not a spoiler it kind of sets the scene for everything that's going on we meet two mer people who are dating each other and are supposed to be made it together and they go to this lake to swim and they both end up missing or dying and then, so these two people are really really close to coral so what we find out though is that coral <laughs> was best friends with the woman that went missing who was made it to the guy or was supposed to be made it to the guy but Cora was screwing the guy behind her best friend's back so <laughs> there's that element it's messy it's super messy so it's like she's dealing with the fact that she's lost two of these people her best friend and her lover but this guilt also that she was screwing her best friend's man there's that but what was interesting about it is that she ends up going to this club and she says tonight i'm going to sit here and drown my sorrows in tons of champagne hot wings and sea blunts i am screaming <laughs> what is a sea blunt what what in the high habits what is a what is a sea blunt anyway um then we have a part where her ex friends this is an ex best friend that is related to the bodyguard she says um like they're not best friends anymore but we can definitely be cordial and f some champagne and wings up and light some sea bloods and twerk on some fine men so <laughs> i love this mix of what i think i typically have seen when i've read urban romance i 
<laughs> I really am enjoying seeing those elements but like in a paranormal and fantastical way. It's just it's a quick read. I'm loving it. I think it's good. I'm excited to see like what romances are going to ensue and how they're going to figure out what this entity is that's pretty much like killing them all off. So I am off work tomorrow because of situations but I think that since tonight is not a workout night for me I think that I am going to focus on reading more of this. I would love to see if maybe I could get 50% into this one tonight and maybe finish it up tomorrow and maybe read one of the picture books. But I have some other things that I need to take care of in terms of reading as well. So I think 50% is a decent goal and then diving into one of the picture books. I'm not too sure like which one I want to read first. I may go with the Jerry Pick Me book first because it's just I know the artwork in this is going to be gorgeous. So I probably will go with the Jerry Pick Me book first, read 50% of the book, and then I'm hoping that tomorrow I can dive a little bit into this so I read like the first five pages of it it is dark when they say like dark fantasy this is definitely a this is a dark fantasy it is what it is super dark fantasy I do have some other stuff saved on KU but I think right now in terms of what's attainable in terms of my goals and being realistic with myself I think that what I have lined up right now is what I'm going to stick with. I have one more that I think I will be able to get through and that's because it's on audio and that is Josephine Against the Sea. It's a middle grade book. It's only six hours on audio so I think that that is another one that I probably will be able to kind of dive into a little bit more than what I anticipate but I think between that that's what six books varying a couple of age groups we have you know children's middle grade um YA and adult and so that's a good variety of me if I find that I'm flying through this stuff a little bit more quickly than anticipated I may pick up something else that I have on KU but for right now I think that's what I'm gonna set as my TBR so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then whenever I have another update I'm gonna check in with y'all. I'm excited to be doing this again. I've been looking forward to doing a second version of this vlog and being able to put out this video on release day of the Little Mermaid is it's great because there's so much to be said about the racism that has been the racism white supremacy that has pretty much just outed itself during the release of the trailer and people not really understanding how mermaids are tied to the black community like very much so tied to the black community and that you know all of a sudden we're just magically creating this random black mermaid when it's been a part of our culture for hundreds of years but you know when you know more you do better and clearly a lot of people don't know anything and so they're not exactly doing better but yes that's it for my first update and I will check in with y'all later up because I'm, I'm actually kind of cold I don't know why but I'm kind of chilly anyway so I finish up two things that I need to check in about so I ended up finishing Bayou book one 
I think that I am not going to continue with the, <laughs> the second book. I know in the beginning I was saying that I was really enjoying the inclusion of so many like paranormal elements but the issue that I have is that I think it began to get a little convoluted and with the inclusion of so many different elements as well as so many different perspectives we were losing a lot of character development and so as the pro story progressed it just got a little unhinged in some ways because we were getting perspectives from Bayou, his love interest, as well as Aquarius, Bayou's sister, Aquarius' sister, another character who plays a big role in this big plot reveal, as well as the villain. And the person I was talking about before is kind of like the antagonist of the story. They're not the true villain, villain but they're, they're serving as an antagonist for most of the story. And so it was just some elements just got a little just out of control. And so there was kind of this lack of consistency. And it was difficult finding the voices of characters. I also think that it was structured very strangely. So we would get like a chapter heading we would say something like Aquarius, right? And so when you're reading it, you're thinking you're primarily getting the perspective of, Aquar of Aquarius. But then within Aquarius's perspective, we would also get multiple other characters perspectives. I don't know. I think the formatting was just a little m different. There was this incorporation of uh, Roanoke Colony and the missing people from the Roanoke Colony, which was interesting in some ways and how the author was using that as kind of a catalyst for the setup of the villain. But it was just too much, y'all. It was too much going on. It was kind of hard to keep up with the multiple plot lines. I think that there were relationships established in this book that were, they weren't fully developed. And then there were relationships, I think, that were destroyed in kind of very rash and unreasonable ways. And it's kind of disappointing because I was like, this is exactly what I was looking for. You know, Black Mermaids at the center of this narrative giving me what I wanted the most. But I think that in addition to lack of character development, kind of a plot that was a little bit all over the place. I feel like in some parts we were kind of grasping for straws at how to make the plot extremely interesting. I think that this definitely did read as a first draft in some areas and I'm very gracious when it comes to you know indie authors because they don't always have editors. It's expensive to have an editor and so I know for a lot of them this is a passion place and they really want to write and get their materials out there and so some things that I may notice as a reader I try to be a little bit more gracious when it comes to indie authors but there were some you know things in there that I think definitely could have used some editing and some cohesiveness that I think the story kind of lacked a little bit. I just don't have it in me. <laughs> I do not like literally just do not have it in me to continue the rest of the series. I just at this point I'm just kind of like I don't feel like it's worth <laughs> continuing the series and so unfortunately that one was a huge miss for me like I said that was a disappointment because it had some really really good elements but the execution was just not there for me. I also finished um, Nisi Shaw's book which is and I'm going to get this title right because I always seem like I get this title right which I did not originally set this on my TBR but it was another book that I had highlighted that I thought potentially could fit as a pick for me. And I know that the first part of it is 2043, if I could just pull it up. It's 2043, A Mermaid I Should Turn to Be. I am so disappointed. <laughs> As a matter of fact, you know what? I'm not going to even talk about this one first. I'm going to talk about finishing Josephine. Yes, we're going to talk about Josephine first because I feel like it would make more sense for me to talk about Josephine because I feel like I'm, this is like the first like major update and I am instantly coming in with everything that I do not like. <laughs> it just sucks. Um, or maybe I should save the good thing for last. Okay, let's save the good thing for last. All right. 
So I ended up finishing Nisi Shaw's book, right, y'all? Um, and oh, the start of this book made so much sense. I, how do, where do I begin with this? So this is like a sci-fi and it follows black people getting their reparations. And this is where I thought the concept was really, really neat that black people were getting reparations, but the reparations were taking place under the sea and water. And I think that the cultural, historical, and religious connections to mermaids that are very apparent in the black community, whether we're talking about in West Africa, um, some in South America, and some in the Caribbean, here in the States, it makes sense that the reparations would be conducted to being underwater. Absolutely get that. And black people being uh, turned into mermaids, merpeople of sorts, which the transformation aspect of that didn't always make sense to me either because I don't think it was as clear cut maybe as Nisi Shaw intended it to be. <sighs> there were so many things that were done not right with this one. One of them being primarily that when we start the short story, it's almost like we are thrown into the story. There is no guidance, no, <laughs> no, like starting point. It's like the story has already been going on and we are just sat right down in the middle of it. And it's kind of like, go with it. I wish you all the luck in the world. Kind of sucks. And then as you continue the story, it gets more confusing. So there's a white supremacist group that is trying to prohibit uh, black people from getting these repara reparations from turning into more people, which is not surprising. I think that that is an element that inevitably would be attached to this. But I feel like not enough time was spent to the actual development of the process of them turning into mer people and then the world itself it, this was only like 30 something pages and so i think that that is a huge idea to take on in 30 pages and i don't think that it could ever have been done well in such a short period of time that's just my personal opinion I don't think that it ever could have effectively been done in a short period of time. And by the end of the book, y'all, I had no idea what was going on. I don't ever like walking out of books like confused. And at first I thought it was just me. I was like, okay, well maybe this just went over my head. I'm not grasping it. But the reviews are very telling. And a lot of people, by the time they got to the end, they were like, I don't, I'm not sure what exactly happened in this. And so I was kind of in a similar position, unfortunately. So I didn't enjoy that. It just is so unfortunate that the two adult titles that I had, I just did not care for. But the one that I did read since my um, first update is going to be Josephine Against the Sea, which I said I probably would end up listening to, which I did. It was a very, very easy listen, um, six hours. What I did find interesting about Josephine Against the Sea, which I really enjoyed it, is that I noticed the parallels between Josephine Against the Sea as well as... Um, what is it uh comb of wishes which they both explore grief i will say josephine against the sea was written first but i they're both similar in the way that they explore grief both of our main characters have lost their mother and they're trying to cope with that loss and then with a father that's a single parent um i think that Josephine Against the Sea does some things that are different from A Come of Wishes. We're seeing Josephine's father begin to date again and she's just not coping with it very well. Like, not at all. She's not handling it well <laughs> at all. And so she tries to ruin every time that he attempts to date somebody until he meets this woman named Maris. And she just can't be deterred from being with her father. Like, Josephine tries all of these things like everything she trusts so much and Maris just won't go away and then Josephine begins to notice some strange things about her 
And that's all I'm going to say because I don't want to spoil it because I think it's just interesting diving into it. I think they have a lot of similarities because we're looking at uh, mermaids specifically from the Caribbean folklore. And so that's kind of why you're going to get kind of, if you read both of them, you're going to get similar vibes. But I think with, with Josephine Against the Sea, what I really, really liked is in the discussion of grief, it's, it's questioning why someone is ready to move on with their life before you're ready and not really understand or processing the fact that everybody handles grief differently. So some people are able to move on faster than others and it doesn't mean that they weren't hurt just as bad or that they don't miss that person. It's just they're ready to move on and heal from it. And so Josephine is really, really struggling with her father dating because she is broken. She's lonely. I, you know, she wants to play cricket and her dad's kind of like, no, just, you know, wants to play cricket with the guys. And he's not, you know, he's not happy about it all the time so she struggles with that a lot and then you have this woman who kind of comes in and sweeps her father off of his feet and he's completely enthralled and Josephine's just kind of like who are you like you've been here for a week and who do you think you are and I she just really is trying to understand which is it's developmentally appropriate for her she's just trying to understand like the pain that her father's going through and I don't think that she always necessarily gets that and so you kind of see her struggle with that throughout the book I think it was like really fast paced it was engaging it was fun I love the character development I love just the mythology incorporated into the story the the folklore I should say the folklore in, in incorporated into it and just seeing how it's connected to Caribbean culture which for me is always interested interesting having um family from Jamaica having a father that is uh part Jamaican so I enjoy you know getting those refreshers about things that are passed along through families and through storytelling and stuff like that but like I said, this one was a quick read. I enjoyed it. I liked the exploration of grief. I think Josephine was just a very bright and quirky character. We have a side character that is on the spectrum and just a good father-daughter relationship. A, a real, I should say a realistic father-daughter relationship because they don't always get along. And when you throw in the loss of a parent and a partner in there, the relationship definitely is going to struggle more. But I think that watching them kind to kind of persevere, not even kind of, they have to persevere through that and continue to make sure that their bond is tight and that they still have this love and respect for one of one another is beautiful. Watching that unfold on, on the pages was beautiful. So um, yeah, I thought I was going to be able to get to anything else, but I think I'm going to stick to reading my three picture books and then I will check back in and wrap this sucker up. <laughs> but yeah. there live three mermaid princesses can you count them how many mermaid princesses can you count yeah one two 
Three. There's three. Good job. I feel and sorry for the dog barking I don't know why they just won't take the dog outside or the dog may be outside they need to bring the dog in they put that baby outside and all they do all evening long is bark and bark and bark hello I am here to wrap up my second Black Mermaid and Siren reading vlog so I've pretty much talked about everything that I've read so far the middle grade book and two adult books that I ended up reading. Unfortunately, I did not get to Sing Me to Sleep. I will save this for, I think, this upcoming week going into June since it does release in June. But this is another recommendation just in case y'all are interested. I... <laughs> I had a book club discussion with my patrons this evening and our book club theme for next month is a retelling that a, a fairy tale retelling or folklore retelling and our kind of like challenges to make it queer because in the United States of course June is Pride Month and I forgot that S.T. Lynn writes these black trans fairy tales and the second book in the series is A Mermaid so that would have been a good one for <laughs> for this vlog but it didn't I didn't connect the dots until I was sitting down I was like dang I definitely could have read that one but either way it's fine I will make sure I list some of the recommendations that I did not get to ones that I have kind of on my backlog because there was a couple more in KU that I did not get to this time around that I'm hoping to get to in the new future there's a lot more Black Mermaid books coming out of course because you know the nature of the movie and stuff and I'm, I'm happy that that is a thing that is happening so as you've probably seen in previous clips baby girl and I read the mermaid princesses as well as mermaid and pirate so mermaid princesses follows three princesses who are trying to figure out who's going to be the next queen and they each want to be queen and they each have different characteristics their names are Anaya Shantae and Kiana and they're trying to figure out like okay well which one of us is going to be queen and their mother pretty much is like listen y'all need to work together because they end up getting an argument she's like you need to figure this out together you you need to determine like th the one that's going to be queen is going to be able to work with in respect her sisters and so they kind of have to work together on something that kind of goes wrong I don't want to spoil it because it's a picture book and it's 32 pages so it's kind of when you talk about picture books it's like ah, oh, I don't want to spoil too much but they kind of have to work together and figure out how their teamwork makes them um the united group of sisters that they should be and so this is some of the artwork in it which I think is absolutely beautiful the artwork is gorgeous it's really pretty so this one um is one that I've been looking forward to for a while. This one just came out this year. The other one that just came out this year is another one by Tracy Baptiste. Now, I read The Jumbies by um, Looking for a Jumbie by Tracy Baptiste, which has a little bit of a mermaid element to it as well, Black Mermaid element, which you know I read Tracy Baptiste's Jumbie series for the last vlog that I did. And then this year, she came out with Mermaid and Pirate, which I think is really, really cute. It's about the relationship, not relationship, friendship between, which is a relationship, but I don't mean like romantic. <laughs> it's, it's about the friendship between Mermaid and Pirate and they both enjoy similar things, but a storm happens and then things go wrong. And there's a language barrier between the two of them and they can't really communicate. And so they're trying to help each other get what they need, but they can't really speak. And so it's this unique bond that they have with each other with a language barrier existing. And I, I really, really liked the 
I just like the cadence of the story. The cadence of the story in terms of like it being a read aloud for bedtime was really, really nice. And I also love the artwork in this. The illustrator behind this one is the same illustrator behind the graphic novel Battle Royale, which I'm excited to read, which is a YA kind of food based graphic novel. And so when I looked at the artwork, I was like, this artwork looks familiar. And it's because I've seen the illustrator's artwork before with some of the artwork. And I love that page, the two of the meeting. You can see on that page right there that there's a clearly a language barrier between the two of them. So we ended up reading those two together. Um, Baby Girl was really, really excited to read those. And then on my own, I ended up reading The Little Mermaid. I read this one on my own because I felt like in terms of length, it was a little bit more difficult. It would have been a little bit more difficult for my three year old to kind of sit and listen to the story. So that's why I was like, ah, you know what? I will, <laughs> I will read this one by myself. So this is by Jerry Pickney. I had not, I don't know how I missed this. This must have came out after I did my vlog in 2020, but Jerry Pickney wrote um, a retelling of Little Mermaid, which he's done a lot of like reimagining of fairy tales and folklore. And he does these beautiful illustrations. I'm gonna show you just, even in this first like page, you can kind of see how beautiful his artwork. These are, I believe, um, pencil drawings and he used watercolor as his method to color everything in. So this, it does take a, a different look at The Little Mermaid in that um, in this version of the story, she feels very isolated from her family. Her family is just, they're not really interested in anything that she's interested in. So she has this fascination with the, you know, people and things on land. And she connects with this other little girl and she wants to have her as a friend because I think she's, she's lonely. And when it's all said and done, she's really, really lonely. And instead of it being a story that focuses on a romantic relationship it focuses primarily on a friendship and in this I think that Jerry Pickney gives her power in saying that you know you do not give up your voice for anyone like no one you do not give up your voice for anyone and so I think that the communication because that line specifically came from the other black girl the one that was human um, and so having two black girls communicate to each other that they are not to give up their voices for anyone or anything was a very powerful moment for me as a black woman who is the mother of a black girl. Um, and so I think Jerry Pickney knew very well <laughs> what he was what he was doing in this. And he said he wanted to give this a lighter tone because he was basing this off of the original Hans Christian Andersen tale and so he wanted to make it lighter and give more hope because you know the original story is rather dark um and so he did a lot of research behind it um and it was it was good even the the reimagining of the sea monster so this is what the sea monster looks like knit if you can tell right there that is the sea monster I just think that the like the artwork itself is just absolutely delightful. It was a beautiful picture book. Makes me want to do a video where I read everything that Jerry Pickney has ever written and do kind of like a meet the author type of situation. So those are the books that I ended up reading all. I had a good time. This is funny. I had a really, really great time with the children stuff and not so great time with the adult stuff, which sometimes that happens. So I... I definitely feel like King Bayou, I was excited at first, but I was not <laughs> happy with how everything happened. And then uh, 2043 uh, by Nisi Shaw, I was not, um, I was not impressed with that one either. So it was nice to be able to read that middle grade book, uh, Josephine Against the Ski, as well as these three picture books that kind of balance that out. I will leave some recommendations down in the description box below for you to check out. Definitely check out that previous vlog that I did, but I'll leave some recommendations of what I currently have on my TBR that features Black Mermaids for you to check out. Um, I know that some people are able to see The Little Mermaid the day before, so this is going out on the official day of release, which is May 26th. So, 
you know if you're going to go see the movie let me know in the comments below if you've already seen it if you were able to see it on Thursday as opposed to Friday let me know your thoughts about it I know that there's some very interesting dialogue going on now about the movie itself but I want to see it myself and make my own judgments about it but just in celebration of it and uh, bringing more awareness to how important this is not just a you know skin color thing as some people would like to say there's a religious and, and historical and cultural relationship um that the black community has with black mermaids um and not just the black community here in the u.s also um you know parts of west africa parts of south america and definitely the caribbean as you can tell from some of the books that i discussed in this vlog there's a very strong connection um to water goddesses and and mermaids in general so you know i wish people would just learn a little history before they open up their mouths but we can have everything we want in life and i'm i know that i know this i know this but anyway like i was saying be sure to check out the other vlog leave all of your comments and recs in the description box below as always if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you want to see more content from me click the subscribe button hit the bell for notifications if you're looking for ways to support this channel whether that is through patreon or through amazon all those links will be down in the description box below as well and i will be back with another video soon